Hello, everybody, and welcome to VFR. Today, we are taking a quick look at so doing some flight planning in Navigraph Charts 8. So the newest update for Navigraph is out, and um, they've included a much-anticipated feature, the World VFR Charts. So um, that's been one of the big things that stops me from flying more other places. Um, so that fleshes out a lot of the World VFR Charts. And we're going to go through a quick little flight plan, explore some of the features uh, flying around the island of Ireland. So we'll whip that up. And um, yeah, we'll go through all the symbols and all the different options you have, focusing again on the VFR charts. So for reference, we'll go to my favorite VFR mapping tool, Sky Vector, um, which has a world VFR chart. Um, and we're looking at the Washington DC area now in the US. Basically, this is a website that displays the um, FAA official charts, VFR charts. So this is the official VFR chart for the United States and all the airspace. And you can see we have all the small airspaces, all these farms. There's a lot of detail in these charts. And these charts are really great for flying in the US. Uh, but if we're flying VFR anywhere else, uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about other things, but there are also these fly charts, which show us specific um, city specific transitions. It's usually city specific and more than a particular airport specific, but in a metro area or in a class Bravo airspace, you'll probably have some fly chart showing different VFR transitions and stuff. So in the States, we have a lot of options with this. We don't want the world high. We want to go back to world VFR. Um, but so you have this kind of coverage across the entire United States. But once we leave the US on Sky Vector, you don't have that anymore. We go to basically where the FAA maps, we have this high detail, really great map. And then we get into the world VFR map, which is a little bit more simplified. So say we go to the UK, we go over to London, and this is the VFR chart we have for, say, London. Now, London's a complicated airspace. Flying VFR in Europe is a whole whole different ballgame. Uh, so we're not talking about those procedures necessarily. But, you know, this is what we get when we fly into Europe or India or Australia or anywhere else. Um, so there's just not the same amount of detail. We still have roads and population centers and airports and VORs and nav aids. But um, again, there's no procedures. I don't have any options to find those local procedures where you might hold what the VFR transitions are. And that's actually a lot more important in Europe than it usually is in the US. In the US, it's one of the things you can do, but often you don't. So this is where Navigraph World uh, uh, Update 8 comes into play. So we go back to Navigraph. This is a look at the Washington DC area in Navigraph now. And uh, for someone who's tuned into the FAA charts, these third party tools with VFR charts are always a little bit of an adjustment just because the symbology is different. So here you have gears for airports. Um, here you have Gaithersburg Airport, for instance, you can go over to um, um, Whiskey 29 here, Bay Bridge, Martin State up here and um, Baltimore Airport here. Um, and the blue rings again represent the Bravo, just like on the um, FAA charts. But again, it's just a slightly different. The nice thing about these, though, is we can zoom in as close as we want and really get fine look at these uh, at these maps, town names, river names, and stuff like that. So you can actually zoom in a lot farther. Uh, but again, we'll just keep an eye on the symbology. But again, we look at, um, let's go over to London now and zoom in on London. And you can see we have a lot more detail, both in terms of airspaces, airports around, the road layouts. But here, if we zoom in far, far enough, we also have some VFR transition routes. So I'm not familiar enough to speak to London, Heathrow, VFR ops specifically. Wouldn't touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, but you do have these charted procedures for VFR aircraft in London Heathrow. Uh, I was looking at Ireland earlier. And uh, if you go over to somewhere like Cork, you see these four, VFR, these four holding points are VFR waypoints. The classes like Quarry, Dunk, yeah, Dunkettle, Dunkettle, uh, halfway roundabout here. So like these are all points that ATC could tell you to hold at, and they'd expect you to have that on your chart. Now in other countries, usually you have to pay for the actual country's official VFR chart. The US is actually unique, relatively unique in the fact that that's all freely available online. Okay, so let's walk through some of the tools we have at our disposal by creating a new flight in Navigraph. So we're gonna create a new flight um, if you go to this tab here with the airplane taking off. And um, we're gonna do a VFR flight. We'll plan to cruise at maybe 2,500 feet. 
whatever else. And so we can select our origin airport. We're going to fly out of Shannon here. Uh, that is Echo India November November. You can also click on the airport and pull all that up and add it to the route. Uh, and then we can also select the destination to be carry. Echo India Kilo Yankee. Add that to route. And it should draw us a nice purple line. 38 miles heading 218. Um, in here, oh, this is all new mower for IFR stuff, but it'll tell you the wind and um, the different runways that you can use. Now, say we wanted to fly VFR along the coast here. Um, if you want to, you can pull up waypoints. So um, clicking on this here on the sidebar, um, this pulls up all of your map filters. Now, I've turned waypoints off because I think it clutters the VFR chart a little bit. But if you bring it in, you can see these. It has some VFR um, waypoints, specific waypoints for Shannon. So you could click on that particular waypoint and add that to the route. And you will add um, that. You can add that via the lat long. You can also click on the church and add that specific waypoint. Then if we wanted to delete that, you just go up to the top and click remove and that will remove, should remove that point. So now we're gonna fly to this um, reporting point, VP 11, which is Kilty Cert Church. Sorry, Irish people. So we fly over the church here. It's a visual reporting point out of Shannon. We can turn left and follow the river up. So say we wanted to fly out here over Valley Bunyan. You can do the same thing. You can right click. And then um, if you wanted to fly just based on that position, we can insert that after. And it'll put a lat long waypoint there. And we can just add it that way. Um, another fun tool, if you click, you right click here, you can see all the different airspaces that you're in. So you can see that we are um, in Shannon airspace, uh, 1000 to flight level 245. Um, and that's all, again, pretty much anywhere you go, but that's a nice contextual thing that you can get with that. So then coming into um, carry, maybe we could put the John Cronin roundabout here and add that to our list. So if we come down here, click on VP009, we can add that to the route after our lat long waypoint. It'll take us there. We know we can go to that hold point and then go to carry whenever um, our fictional air traffic control can show us that. So again, a highly um, customizable route and you can um, zoom out on that, clicking on that button. I believe that is for your moving maps. This controls all of the moving map controls with your airplane. If you want to follow it on VFR, or you want to just do it the old fashioned way. You can turn it all off. Well, again, finally, just looking at these filters a little bit more. Um, you can turn, I like to turn off waypoints sometimes because a lot of them, it can clutter up the map a little bit and US charts don't have them as prominent as these do. Uh, but if you want, you can turn on airways or holding patterns or all this stuff, or you can just turn off whole groups. You can turn off all the navigation layer. Um, and that will preserve, that should preserve the VFR waypoints. Uh, so that's helpful. And then um, you can also, you know, if the airspaces are bugging, you can turn that off if you just want to navigate based on the points of interest. So again, lots of great options for um, setting up that flight and then um, tailoring the VFR map to your specific preferences. Uh, now, if you don't want to use VFR, if you don't want to use Navigraph, you don't want to pay for it, there are some other tools you can do this kind of stuff in. Uh, the one that really is probably most capable is Little Nav Map, um, which has a lot of the same features. You can pull up the airspaces. Um, it has a very similar um, feature set, uh, but the user interface is not as clean, I don't think, as Navigraph. Um, and then the other one, SimToolkit Pro, also has some of this functionality embedded in it. That's what I will also sometimes use for a VFR flight, um, where we have to put down waypoints and do stuff. Um, but again, this is pretty much up to as full featured as anything out there for VFR flying, and it gives you all the stuff you do need to know. And again, it's nice that you can zoom in and you do have all these, uh, you look here, you have obstructions and a lot of that lower level detail that we lose out on the sky vector kind of generic world VFR map. So that's it. That's just a little bit of an uh, introduction into uh, Charts 8 and Navigraph using the VFR chart features. 
i5 missed anything or you have any other tips or tricks that you like to use for um, your vfr flight planning drop in the comment section below as always like comment subscribe all the usual youtube stuff for more flights and maybe we'll fly this flight uh here in not too bit too too long we'll do hopefully this will unlock some more international flying for me personally and um just help me understand these places better so thanks for watching everybody take it easy